Hi everyone and welcome to the ECG tip series. This is Hisham Ibrahim. I'm one of the emergency medicine consultants in the United Kingdom. And today we're going to carry on with our fifth ECG tip. Before we make a start, I'd like to announce here about this course from zero to hero in acute coronary syndrome ECG. So this is a new course that is available online now that includes 14 different modules, over 10 hours of ECG videos with regular assessment after each uh, video that covers almost all what I know about acute coronary syndrome ECGs. I think it's full of fun and I think it's going to be really useful. There will be a link to the course in the show notes of this video, so please check it out and see what you think and I'll be really keen to hear your feedback about it. Let's move on then to our tip for um, this time and it's going to be about the P waves. So we're going to go through the P waves in few back to back tips and we're going to start now talking about it. So the P wave is basically uh, this wave in here and it is the first positive wave, positive deflection in the ECG. It represents the atrial depolarization and the normal duration for it from the beginning till the end is uh, about three small squares, so about less than 120 uh, milliseconds. And the P waves should be upright in lead one and two and inverted in AVR. So these are some basic information about the P wave before we talk about our tip this time. Let's, uh, let's put this into the, uh, the practice. So let's say that you're faced with this ECG and you're looking at this one and um, I guess what you're going to see here, if you're going to describe this, is you are looking at narrow complex regular tachycardia. So the differential diagnosis for something like this is going to be one of three uh, major things. First is going to be an SVT, second is going to be atrial flutter, and third is going to be sinus tachycardia. So that's the differential for narrow complex regular tachycardia. There are other stuff, but we're not going to go there. So to differentiate the three, the answer is going to be in the P waves. If you can see just one P wave before each complex, then you're talking about sinus tachycardia. No P waves at all, then that's an SVT, and more than one P wave, that is atrial flutter. So the answer is in the P waves. So you need to be meticulous about where to find P waves and, um, and how do they look like. So looking at this ECG, if you try to find where the P wave is, uh, the first question that should come to your head is, where shall I check? Where is the best place to check for P waves? I've been told in the medical school that lead two is the best place to try to check out for P waves. Then I grew up and I started getting more experience and I've learned something different. I've learned that actually the best place to check for P waves, you should look everywhere, but if you're going to choose one lead to check for P waves, the best lead is V1. So let's think about it. So this is our um, heart. And uh, if we look at number one here, this is your SA node and number two is your AV node. And then the conductive system is down here. So, um, so this is where the SA node anatomically um, is. And if you think about where we put our leads when we apply the ECG leads on the chest wall, V1 is kind of just over the SA node. So it makes perfect sense in my head that V1 is where that I'm going to start looking for P waves um, if I can't see them uh, anywhere else. So let's go back to our ECG and apply this tip there. So here is our ECG. And uh, yeah, we're looking at narrow complex regular tachycardia. So SVT versus flutter versus sinus tachy. And there are no clear P waves anywhere in the ECG, but let's focus on our V1. And if we make it bigger and look at it now, we can see that there is a regular deflection that happens before each complex. That's the P wave. So there is only one P wave before each complex uh, that we can see in V1, which means that this was a sinus tachycardia case. Let's have a look at a different example. So uh, here is a different patient who presented with palpitations and looking at the ECG, to be honest, I can see P waves 
clearly in so many parts in um, this ECG. So let's make things bigger and see what we think. Let's have a look at this part of the ECG. So, um, so we can clearly see here one P wave before each complex in lead two, AVL, yeah, there is a one P wave here, V2, yeah, one P wave before each complex. Uh, so that's fine. Let's look at the rhythm strip uh, here. So lead two, yeah, so one P wave before each complex. So actually looking at all these leads, I would say we've got one P wave before each complex and uh, it's kind of a borderline long, so it might be a borderline first degree heart block. But if we look at lead V1, we will notice that it is not just one P wave. There is what looks like another one before each complex. So let's map things out. So if you map this out, you will find that they're mapping perfectly, which means that actually this is not first degree heart block. This is a second degree heart block, which will change your plan completely. So this was our tip for this week. It's about the P waves and where to, um, where to find them. And V1 is the best place to check out for P waves. So I hope that you found this useful. Uh, please go and check out the From Zero to Hero ECG course, and I'll be waiting for your feedback about this. And uh, thanks for your time today, and I'll be talking again to you very soon. Stay safe, and bye for now.